Hey guys, how's it going? So, I just recently stumbled upon a video by Vsauce recently which talked about this little device. The Sega Dreamcast VMU. Now, if you don't know what the Sega Dreamcast VMU is, it's essentially a memory card for the Sega Dreamcast that basically acts as a Tamagotchi device uh, outside of the Dreamcast controller, provided that you had some CR2032 batteries. But anyways, what the Vsauce uh, video was basically describing about the Sega Dreamcast VMU was that the CPU inside of this thing is actually nicknamed the potato. Yes, that's right. So you can literally say that the Sega Dreamcast VMU is powered by a potato. It was so absolutely absurd. I couldn't believe it at first and I had to see that for myself. And uh, you know what guys, spoiler alert, it is powered by a potato. But in doing so, I've also learned how to take apart a Sega Dreamcast VMU entirely. And that is why, that is the entire point of this video. I know there's going to be people out there that are like me and are curious to see if it's really is, if this thing is really powered by a potato or not with their own eyes. And I'll show you guys um, how to uh, basically take apart in order to let you guys see that. And I know there's also going to be people out there that are going to have problems with the screen, you know, like maybe like dead pixels and all that stuff. Uh, buttons that don't work properly, the battery compartments kind of messed up and all that kind of stuff. I'll gladly show you guys how to fix those things. So, without much further ado, let's open up the Sega Dreamcast VMU. Alright, so before I begin my tutorial, um, there's one thing that I'd like to say and that is this tutorial of how to take apart your Sega Dreamcast VMU can basically be applied to virtually any type of VMU out there. Doesn't matter if it's like one of the colored varieties of VMUs, doesn't matter if it's a Godzilla, Hello Kitty, etc, uh, etc. Et it doesn't matter. This tutorial can be applied to any one of those. So, in order, the, the stuff that you need in order to take apart the Sega Dreamcast VMU is that uh, you're going to need two uh, screwdrivers. This one right here is basically the, um, I believe this is the Phillips head screwdriver that is one size smaller than the normal variety of Phillips head screwdriver. And this one is a pretty small one. It's, it's not the smallest size of Phillips head screwdriver, but I believe it's the next one up from that one. All right, so what you're also going to need is also this uh, little uh, soft clean rag right here. Uh, so that like, um, because I've worked on like taking apart like these uh, VMUs in the past on like a hard table like this and unfortunately uh, it tends to scratch off these uh, texts right there because these texts are actually a lot more fragile than you may think. So that's why it's perfectly, um, that's why you definitely, I would definitely recommend that you try to take your uh, apart your say drink as VMU on this type of rack. But, on top of that, if you are looking to clean up the contacts of the Sega Dreamcast VMU, the other things that I would absolutely recommend is uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, 70%. 90% would be better, but 70% works as well, and Q-tips as well. And then the final thing that you're going to need is a microfiber cloth. Uh, and I'll explain what this is for when we get to there. But uh, yeah, so uh, all you need to do is to take your VMU and flip it on the back. There, there are basically five screw points that you're going to need to unscrew. Uh, basically, there's one screw for the uh, battery compartment and uh, four other screws in the corners of the VMU. Go ahead and take apart all of those uh, screw points with the bigger Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, so I guess I just got done with the uh, battery compartment right here. Uh, personally, I would like to recommend that you leave the, um, the screw of the battery compartment lid on the lid because like it, it's, it's different than all the other uh, the, the four other screws on the back of the VMU. So just leave it on there and go ahead and do that and just set off the lid to the side and then just work on unscrewing the other four screws on the back of the Sega Dreamcast VMU. Okay, so here is the last screw. All right, so just gently try to uh, try to just shake these uh, screw screws right off. Let's see. Okay, they're a little bit hard to come out sometimes, but uh, ah, well, just a little bit off. Oh, almost lost. Ah, I fell on the floor. That's great. Oh well, at least I found it though. But uh, yeah, so just. Once you're done removing all five of those screws, this is the part that you need to be careful of, and I'll show you why in a little bit. When you take off the lid of the back part of the Sega Dreamcast VMU, always open it like a buck to the left side. 
because you see that there's actually a set of wires connected to the back of the Sega Dreamcast VMU. Now, the reason why those wires are there is because this part right here is the speakers of the Sega Dreamcast VMU. That's right, that's that part where if you got a Sega Dreamcast VMU plugged right into the Dreamcast controller while you turn on the console, it's the one that makes that beep noise. Usually what causes it to beep is that if you don't have a CR2032 batteries inside of the battery compartment powering the VMU, it will beep, letting you know that there's no power inside of the Sega Dreamcast VMU. Uh, so obviously the way to fix that is obviously to buy yourself some CR2032 batteries and put it inside of your VMU, which you should because that's how you play the mini games. But the other way that you can do that is to physically yank this uh, wire right here and just permanently separate it from the speakers uh, and it will it will basically brick it permanently. Um, I would definitely not recommend doing that because the Sega Dreamcast VMU mini games have like sounds in them and all that kind of stuff and obviously if you were to yank on it you wouldn't be able to hear those sounds anymore and that in order to fix that look how tiny these solder points are. They're very small and uh, yeah so that's gonna be really hard to solder these things back together so I would highly recommend that you don't try to break it like that but anyway so yeah just carefully just leave it like this okay alright so the very next thing that you want to do is that uh, um, so there are these two metal strips right here and they're being held down by these two small screws right here. What you're going to need to do is to take your smaller Phyllis Hef screwdriver and basically unscrew these two points right there. I hope you guys can see them very well because they're kind of tiny. Uh, I'll probably show like a little bit of a close-up view in order to help you guys out but uh, yeah but just unscrew these two screws and uh, and then and then and then I'll talk about what, what you're going to need to do next. Okay, so I got these two screws basically um, unscrewed and all that stuff. And what these two metal strips are, they are essentially the... Oops, I dropped something right here. These two are essentially the battery contacts and all that kind of stuff. So if you're having trouble with basically when you pop in brand new CR2032 batteries inside of your Sega Dreamcast VMU and they're not like working and all that stuff, more than likely it's probably because of these guys. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to clean them. And the way that you do it is that you basically, uh, I already got this cap filled with isopropyl alcohol. Basically, you just take one end of your Q-tip, okay, and you're going to take that side and clean the contacts of these uh, metal strips right here. Now, you're, preferentially, you should probably clean only the parts that really touch the battery and all that stuff. It's not really necessary to clean all the metal strips, but if you really want to, you can and all that. But yeah, just clean it at, uh, so this metal piece, you see these two um, little strips of metal right here. That's the part that you want to clean for this particular strip right here. Okay. And then, oops, I probably shouldn't have done that. Because yeah, uh, what basically causes these metal pieces to stop working or to get dirty in the first place is fingers, uh, fingerprints and all that stuff, the oils from your finger. Um, so yeah, definitely like once you clean these things, try not to touch the, the parts that touch the batteries and all that stuff with your fingers all over again because then that basically defeated the purpose of cleaning these things in the first place. But yes, yeah, for this uh, little uh, metal strip right here, you want to clean on this long part right here, okay? And then yeah, just like what you did on the, uh, like I, what I did on the uh, other metal contact, you basically take the dry end of your kid tip and wipe off all the excess uh, moisture off once you're done cleaning. Uh, with the wet end of your q-tip so yeah that basically uh, finished up cleaning up the contacts now you could have cleaned those things without having to take apart the VMU the reason why I don't do that is because I'm sure you notice the PC boards right there uh, PCB board is right there and what that means is that basically if you try to take your q-tip and you clean it the excess alcohol tends to get right into the the board right here and you know, um, and what that does is it basically prevents the VMU from working correctly unless you leave it to dry. But because it's in, once the alcohol is inside of the case, it takes way longer to dry than it should. Probably like a day or so and all that. And uh, that kind of sucks. So that's why I highly would recommend that you try to clean the contacts outside of the VMU. But anyway, so once you have done that, um, by taking off those screws from those uh, metal contacts, not only did you free these uh, the contacts from the PCB board, you also freed the PCB board from the front of the Sega Dreamcast VMU. Now this thing it did not take uh, uh, come apart like the way it should. Um, because I've taken apart this VMU before, so that's why it's not doing the thing. But when you first take apart the VMU um, 
a PCB board off the front of the case, it actually should look more like this. And I'll talk more about why that is in a little bit. But basically, yeah. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave the the screen on there for like this tutorial sake to not confuse people. Um, and I'm just going to move on to now the front part of the uh, VMU case. So basically, you get this little plastic piece right there. Save it because that's the part that holds the screen together. And then you got this little rubber piece and all that. Uh, what you need to do is that you're going to need to remove this rubber piece from there. And then you're going to need to remove the D-pad from there. And then, now if you if you really want to, uh, you can just basically take like, uh, you could just submerge this in like water and all that stuff in order to fully clean the plastic part of the, the uh, front case of the Sega Dreamcast uh, VMU. Unfortunately, you can't do the same thing with the back cover because as, uh, as I showed you guys before, there's like the uh, little speaker right there. So you unfortunately can't do that with the back cover, but you can do it with the uh, front cover of the uh, Sega Dreamcast VMU. Anyways, so now I'm gonna move on to these little rubber pads right here because these are essentially the buttons of the Sega Dreamcast VMU. So if you're ever having trouble when you're playing the Sega Dreamcast uh, VMU mini games, if you're having trouble with basically uh, with button inputs and all that stuff, Basically, all you need to do is to basically, it's, it's kind of the same as uh, cleaning up the metal contacts. You need to take the wet end of your Q-tip and apply isopropyl alcohol to the black parts of the rubber padding right here. And all that kind of stuff. And once you're done doing that, you basically take the dry end, like the metal contacts, and you basically just dry, uh, wipe off the excess alcohol from the rubber pads right here. Okay. And then what you're going to need to do next is that you're going to Preferentially, you should probably clean up the golden uh, contacts as well. Just wipe these things right here, like so, and it should be working all swell again for the button inputs and all that stuff. Now, uh, yeah, as I was saying before, uh, it was kind of weird for this screen to be attached to the front part of the view because it usually looks like this. And the reason why is because this screen is probably one of the weirdest screens I have ever seen for like any like small device like calculators, Tamagotchi and so on and so forth because um, this screen is not being held on by wires, solder, anything like that. It's actually held on magnetically in a very weak magnetic charge and all that stuff. Uh, and also I think, no I, I was about to say that well, maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. Because like when I first take up, and I'm sure you guys are gonna experience this too, when you first take apart the screen, if it's gonna feel like it's really stuck on there. I think they made it applied a little bit of glue onto the uh, little part right here and all that kind of stuff. Don't worry about it. If you, when you start pulling, you can just simply pull this thing apart. And if it feels like it's gonna break, don't worry about it. It's not gonna break. Because as I said before, this thing is held by either a little bit of glue or some magnetic charge and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, basically remove the screen right here. And here comes the main part that you guys, you know, who thinks that, you know, or if you're looking for the CPU of the drink of the drink has VMU, here it is. And it says so right there, Sega Japan Potato. Pretty cool and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so that basically concludes the whole part of taking apart the Sega Dreamcast VMU. Now it's time to put it back all together. So what you're going to need to do is that, um, what I usually do is I don't put the, the screen back onto the VMU because it's kind of hard to align things up. No, what I usually do is I use the front of the uh, Sega Dreamcast VMU cover to help me with that. So basically, um, you should put this little plastic thing on the uh, little peg right here first. It, uh, I wish, it's a little bit hard. Yeah, it's supposed to have these things down. And these little um, things on the side, they're pointing towards you and all that stuff. So just go put it on that little peg right there. Uh, like so, it's a little bit hard to do it. Okay, like that. And then you're going to take your screen. Oh, speaking of that, uh, the screen, if you ever have like any dead pixels and all that stuff, the very act of removing the Sega Dreamcast, uh, uh, removing the screen from the, the, the VMU uh, PCB board will essentially get rid of those dead pixels. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so um, like I just showed a little bit, make sure that you try to clean this off with a the microfiber cloth that I showed earlier and all that stuff. Now, you will notice that if you look very closely, one side of the, the screen is flat 
well, on the other side, has this little indentation at the top of it. The indentation means that it's pointing up. So that's the way you want to put it in as well. So like this. See the little indentation? It's pointing up. So put it in like that. Uh, like so. Okay. Like that. And you're pretty good. Uh, if you actually put this in the wrong way, like upside down, it won't fit as well. And on top of that, it gives you a really glitched up screen. So make sure that you put this uh, with the little uh, indentation pointing up. Okay, so what then you're going to need to do next is to take your little D-pad right here. And then you're going to need to, you see these little notches at the side right there? Well, they basically match up with the little notches on the uh, this uh, part of the uh, front part of the VMU uh, cover right here. So just put it in like that, like so. And then you just simply, all you need to do is just simply put in the rubber padding on like this. Okay, and then just, it's a little bit difficult doing this, but uh, let's see, uh-oh. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, this is the first time I've ever done this, something like this on camera, so forgive me if I start messing up occasionally here and there, but that's okay. Okay, good. So basically, yeah, you just assemble it back like this, and then what I always love to do is I love to take this, the, um, the uh, PCB board of the VMU, and just gently put it back on there, like this. Mm -hmm. Put it back on there like that, try to make it pop into place. And then you're going to need to take those metal pieces that were the battery contacts and all that stuff and screw them back on into the, uh, the, uh, these two uh, screw holes right here uh, in this order that I'm about to show. So you put the small one to the one on the right. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to need to put in the long thin one to the one on the left, like so. And then, once you have done that, basically all you need to do is to put the back part of the Sega Dreamcast VMU right on, okay? And then you're going to need to screw these four screw points with the big Phillips screwdriver back on. And then finally, after when you're done with all that, then you could put on the, uh, the battery lid cover. All right, so I just got done with these uh, four screw points right here. And then you can move on and just put on the uh, the the uh, lid for the battery compartment back on, and then once you're done with all of that, you're basically all finished with putting the Sega Dreamcast VMU back together. Oh, and one more thing that you need to do is to obviously test your VMU. So in order to do that, I have I already have this Sega Dreamcast uh, control plugged to my Dreamcast right here. So I'm going to insert in there, turn on my Dreamcast. Ooh, and it looks good already. So let's see. And let's see in a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, it's taking a little bit. Aha, there it is. So yeah, once you see a little image like that, that looks all great and all that kind of stuff, no glitchy or whatever, that means your Sega Dreamcast BMU is correctly put back together. So uh, yeah, so that basically concludes my tutorial of how to take apart and put the back together again, the Sega Dreamcast BMU. On top of that, I'm, I'm sure that if you guys that had like problems with the screen, the buttons, the battery contacts and all that kind of stuff, I hopefully uh, helped you guys um, fix those problems and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, and that basically concludes this video. Um, this is the first time I've ever done a video like this. I hope I didn't take too long in some of my explanations. But uh, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, and this is where I end the video. So. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Um, this is the Sega Genicast. My name is Michael, and may the dream be with you. It's so weird when I do it like this, but oh, oh wow. May the dream be with you.